It's a gospel on the radio talk show. A show about dreams and visions and a church that is indeed triumphant, alive, and well. For the church, triumphant is alive and well. Hello, Tallahassee. This is the Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am your host. And uh, well, as I always do on Sunday mornings, I just have a great time just being with you and sharing my heart. As I say, this is a show about dreams and visions and a church triumphant, alive and well. The church, the church is our theme, has been from the very, very beginning. I've been doing this show since 2002. Two, getting close to a anniversary here, and the thing is, the thing about the church is that I do believe that uh, we are under a severe attack from the enemy in the day and age in which we are living, and I believe that the devil has ramped up all the forces of hell against the church and against God's people. This is show number 1,128 today. The rules are simply this. We don't talk sports, politics, or doctrine, but we always speak well of one another, and that has worked out very, very well over all these years. And um, today, as I am here in the studio by myself, no guests today, I have a very heavy heart, and uh, my heart grieves for the things that I see happening around us here in this country in which we live. And um, I believe that we are at a time when the church is losing its grip on the ability to shape humanity. Now, that does not take away from the power of God and of God's ability to do all things. But I do believe that we are living in a time when uh, evil has just taken hold. And uh, young people, unfortunately, so many young people have just turned their back on God, and um, there's just evil in this world. And so this stirs my heart, and I want to talk about it today. And uh, the thing is, as I began to formulate my thoughts, I began to think about a time in Bible history. And it's interesting that I'm using this particular character to bring out my thoughts. Because the thing is, is whenever there is corruption, the whole nation suffers. Everybody suffers. When there are people who lie, cheat, steal, then everybody suffers as a result of it, and that cannot be hidden. And the person that I'm thinking about is during the magnificent reign of King David. His, his time as uh, the king of Israel was really a remarkable time. I mean, from the... Uh, very, very humble days of King Saul. Of course, remember uh, the children of Israel. They'd gone through all of those years with the, the judges that ruled and how that they would be up and down. The, the things would be prosperous. There'd be a close relationship with God and then they would all just seem to diminish as the people would turn away from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they would suffer. And every time this happened, they would suffer. And many times it was because of corruption of those who were in power. So during the uh, days of David, of course, David was anointed of God. We know that story. How that uh, God sent uh, Samuel to go down to Bethlehem and he was anointed to be the next leader of Israel. And God brought it to pass. And uh, 
seven years in Hebron, and then the remainder of 30 years in Jerusalem. And David saw all kinds of potential, and he expanded the territory of Israel. He was a tremendous soldier general, and he led his uh, armies into battle, and they prevailed. And David had these uh, tremendous uh, mighty men, and I've read about them. And they were just men who were just extraordinary in their feats and the things that they would do. And they loved David with a passion. And of course, um, one day in my readings, I came upon that list of uh, David's mighty men. And my heart was just smoked. I, I, I just began to grieve when I read that one of David's mighty men was Uriah the Hittite. And uh, oh my goodness, when I read that, I just said, I just can't hardly believe that. It just makes my heart ache to know that Uriah the Hittite, and you see it in the story as it unfolds, his, his undying loyalty, not only to Israel, but to David, a Hittite. And so, Here is this uh, tremendous, prosperous time for the people of Israel. Gold, silver, it was just uh, in, in plenty. People were prospering. Things were going well. And the incredible thing about it is that it was a time of great spiritual renewal. Because their leader, David, was a a man who loved God and a man who sought after God. And he displayed this to the people, and the people saw this. And he was the one who brought the ark of God back to the city of Jerusalem. But yet he found himself, and Scripture tells us that there came a time when he didn't go to battle with the armies of Israel. And he tarried at his house there in Jerusalem. And he took a walk up on the rooftop of the palace. And there he saw this beautiful woman. And they had the the, the bathing tents all set up. And he saw her. And uh, he began to lust after her. And he used his power to do a very evil thing. And he sent for her. And she came. And they had relations together. And they, she became pregnant with a child. Well, for a man of uh, the king's reputation, this news just could not be known. And so it had to be dealt with. And so the first thing that David did, he sent for Uriah the Hittite, the the woman's uh, husband. Her name was Bathsheba. And uh, he sent for Uriah to come back to the city so that he could be with his wife, so that they could say that the child was the child of Uriah the Hittite. But as I have said, that Uriah was one of David's mighty men. And uh, he said that he would not go to his house and and be with his wife as long as the armies of Israel were out in the field. You see his fierce loyalty and love for Israel and for David. Well, that plan did work. Still had the problem. And so David went to one of the most uh, uh, brutal, cruel, vicious men in all of Israel. His name was Joab. And Joab was captain of the host. In other words, he was the the commanding general. And there had been a few times when his position had been challenged 
And every time he murdered the man that had been appointed to uh, take his place. So of all the people that he could go to, he went to Joab. And uh, basically a letter was sent. And it was said to um, place Uriah the Hittite in a very special force and to charge the city and uh, then pull back and leave Uriah and his men there where they were uncovered and vulnerable and people shooting arrows from off the wall of the city. And Joab was killed. And uh, Joab sent a reply back to David to tell him the report of the battle. And um, it was said that soldiers had been sent up to the wall and they were ambushed. And uh, he said to the message barrier, he says, and when the king begins to say, why did you charge the wall like that? You're to say, and your servant, Uriah the Hittite, is dead. And when he heard those words, he said, well, God blesses some, some die, and just let it go. Problem solved, you see. But see, this is what I'm saying. This is corruption. This is corruption at the highest level of government. Corruption so deep to where not only had there been the uh, adultery, but now murder and the plot to cover it up. Well, you say, these things happen, and it's no big deal. But the truth of the matter is, is it is always a big deal. Whenever there's corruption at the highest levels of government, all the people suffer. It's amazing to me how so often people don't seem to understand this. But let me tell you what happened. Of course, you've heard the story of, of David and Bathsheba and Nathan the prophet and how that uh, uh, God revealed this to the prophet Nathan. And uh, Nathan was now charged with the responsibility to go confront the king. And uh, that's a dangerous thing to have to do in that day and age. So Nathan came up with a story. And uh, he went and he told his story to King David. And the story went like this. He said, uh, there was a man who had a little lamb. And uh, he loved that little lamb. And he, he made a pet out of it. And he would carry that little lamb in his bosom. And he would just pet it. And he just... That was just his, he just loved that little lamb. But next to him was a uh, rich man. And he had lots and lots of sheep. He was very rich and very successful. But the rich man had company coming. People traveling through. And uh, he needed to prepare a meal and a feast for his visitors who were coming through. And instead of going out and slaying one of the sheep from his own flock, he had many. He goes and he takes that little lamb from that man who loved that little lamb so much. He took that lamb and slaughtered it and fed it to his travelers. Well, when Nathan the prophet when he heard that story, or when, when he told that story to David, and David heard that story, he was angry. He was wroth. 
And he said to Nathan the prophet, tell me who that man is and I'll have him killed. (laughs) And Nathan the prophet stuck his finger in the king's face and said, you are the man. And uh, David began to cry out to God. And he began to repent. And uh, the end result of this was the child, the child that Bathsheba was carrying, David's child, died. But that's not the end of the story. Because David was told by Nathan the prophet that there is a price to be paid for your sin and your rebellion against God. And he said two things. He said, first of all, the sword will never depart from you and from your house and your nation. And like I say, everybody suffers when there's sin and corruption and cover up Everybody suffers. And then the second thing that Nathan the prophet told David, he said that, he said, thy wives, thy wives will be taken from thee. And that which you have done in secret, I will reveal it to the entire nation. And of course, we know that during the rebellion of Absalom, his son, Absalom took Ten of David's wives and put the uh, ceremonial tents up on the roof of the palace and he had relations with them. You see, the saying is in those days that he who has the king's wives has the kingdom. And so here, David had committed this terrible sin, both of the adultery and of the cover-up and the murder, thinking that nobody suffers, no price to pay. But there always is. There's always a price to pay. And not only did David have to pay that price, but the whole nation, because of the war and because of the sword not departing from the house, and the nation having to see all of the turmoil in the house of David. Everybody was affected. Everybody suffered. Listen to the Bolin family. That's a bowling family, <laughs> and uh, somebody's believing. And uh, I chose that song to play as we were talking about corruption and how the corruption affects everybody. And uh, people who do corrupt things, and they try to cover it up, and they're dishonest about it, then... Uh, Everybody's affected by it. But here is the the countermeasure is simply somebody is believing. Somebody is praying. Somebody is trusting the Lord. And somebody is praying through and uh, intercession. And that's, that's all the work of the church. And that's why it's so important that the church be strong in the spirit. And in difficult times, there has to be those who are on their faces before God. And so the thing is, is that when there's tough times, that's when the church needs to rise. And we need to be people of prayer, 
people who believe in prayer, who believe in God, who believe in the miraculous, believe in the intervention of God. This is the uh, Gospel on the Radio Talk Show. I'm Pastor Jack King. That is my name. I am the pastor of Freedom Road Christian Ministry 720 Capital Circle Northeast. We're in the Crescent Park Plaza. And uh, we start our Sunday morning worship service at 1105 Sunday school at 10 o'clock, and visitors are very important to us. We love visitors. We love seeing somebody um, come and worship with us for the first time. I believe you'd have a good experience, and so I'm recommending it. <laughs> I'm recommending it. And so come and join us, frcm.us. That's our website. You can check it out there. Also, you can find this show on podcast if you want to share it with a friend. It's uh, number 1128. That's the uh, show number. And uh, basically what you'd have to do is uh, type in um, on your podcast there, Pastor Jack King, Pastor Jack King, Tallahassee. Just type that in. And then it'll come up and there'll be all kinds of uh, broadcasts to listen to there. That We have the daily broadcast on there as well as the talk show. And uh, you can also hear the daily broadcast Monday through Friday here on 94.1 at 11 o'clock. That's a daily Bible teaching of the Word of God. It's a gospel on the radio broadcast. And today you're listening to the gospel on the radio talk show and then on Saturday nights at 7 o'clock here on 94.1 it's the Saturday night gospel sing and I'm the uh, host of that show as well and uh, we play a full hour of great southern gospel music and some commentary in between but you won't find that on the podcast because well it just can't be (laughs) too many Hurdles to have to go through to make that happen. So you just have to make sure you tune in over the air Saturday night, 7 o'clock here on 94.1 on your radio dial. So, corruption and how it affects everybody. A nation suffers when those who are in leadership are People who are dishonest and uh, people who uh, serve the almighty dollar. And it's just a, it's just a time to where the work of the enemy, and when, the, when I say the enemy, I'm talking about the devil. He just begins to exploit things. And it's interesting how that so often you'll find the connection of immorality. It all just kind of centers around this whole thing. When you have corruption and leadership, it's just amazing how it manifests itself. And, of course, we know that there are forces of hell that uh, lead these things. And there have been times in history when... uh, the, the enemy has been beat back. And usually it's, it's when the church is uh, that great city on the hill. It's like the, the Bible talks about. When the church is shining bright for all the world to see. And people are looking to it. And they're, they're finding hope in the church. And uh, uh, a great city is set on a hill that the Bible talks about. And there have been times in history when that was so, because there was a spirit of revival and, and the people coming to the Lord and experiencing the power, the majesty of the Holy Spirit and the conviction and people's lives would change. And there have been these times in history. We call them great revival movements, but they're, they're, they're such a, a time and such a presence to where God is very much moving in the hearts of people. And then the church is enhanced and uh, 
people come to faith, and it's just an incredible time. And when that happens, then the forces of evil and the forces of hell are, are beat back. And a lot of the things that have been, would have been manifesting itself in the, the, the realms of immorality, then they'll abate for a while. And of course, we, we find this time in the book of Exodus. And this was when God had called Moses up to the mountain to give him the law, to give him the word. And it was so, I mean, incredibly powerful. I mean, God on the mountain. And the armies and the people of Israel were gathered around at the, at the base of the mountain. And they, and they put a rope all the way around that mountain so that nobody would cross except Moses and Joshua who went up part way up the mountain. And it was said that if anybody were to break through and cross that barrier, like they're going to head up to the mountain to be near Moses and God, then throw a spear and kill them. I mean, that's how severe this was. The, the presence of God and the aura was God, of God was just everywhere. But up there on the mountain when spiritual things were happening, it was prolonged. And, then, and you read it in the book of Exodus. From the time that Moses goes up into the mountain, it's a long time and there's a lot of things. It takes you a while to read the chapters through until you come to that part to where the people began to turn away and they began to uh, question the leadership of Moses. And they began to question about what was going up on up on that mountain. And they did what humanity will do when they depart from the presence of God. They will turn to carnal, immoral things. And that's what they did. And uh, here, Aaron, he was uh, left in charge. And he wasn't the great spiritual person that Moses was. And he began to fear the people. And uh, instead of pointing them toward God and toward building their personal relationship with God, he allowed them to begin to, to look at the things that the world will look at, gold and silver and things that are shiny and things that appeal to the flesh. And this becomes the uh, corruption of humanity and how that humanity will begin to lose their spiritual identity and spiritual awareness. And so the Bible describes how it was that finally Aaron said, well, just give me all your gold and all your jewelry, and we'll see what we can do. And so he mixed it all up together, and, and he created this image uh, called a golden calf. And uh, they began to worship it. In other words, they, they replace the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who had led them across the Red Sea. And now they were worshiping something made out of minerals. And uh, as a result of it, they began to degrade themselves. And they were dancing around nude and, and uh, all the things that just seems to happen to humanity in its depraved state as it began to fade further and further away from the presence of God. And it's, it's, it's so obvious when you just, you just look around and you, and you see these things and you see how people begin to be uh, uh, joyous about it. And, uh, and they began to become to the point to where they, they considered themselves to be above all of the other humanity because they have uh, quite, quote, uh, the way to say, well, 
we're the people who are right here. And uh, then they began to hate those who would stand for righteousness. I had a, an experience in my own life here. Just recently, we were doing some uh, what we call boosting on Facebook, uh, advertising the youth camp that's coming up. And I'm telling you what, it's like opening up Pandora's box. I mean, we began to get the most horrible comments. And uh, it's just, I've... I'm, I will confess that I am a very naive person. I live in a very confined world. <laughs> and, uh, uh, just my, my church, my family, uh, my, my radio audience, I'm, I'm just not a person who's, let's just use the expression very worldly. And, uh, well, I'm telling you what, I'm just, and the thing about it, I haven't even seen it myself. This is just what my wife tells me, that she read the, the comments, and of course, uh, others have read them as well. Of course, we had to pull down the ad because uh, it's just so vile. And it's interesting how they would use phrases to accuse uh, those who would be involved in this camp as being what they are. In other words, Instead of calling themselves these things, they would call us the, the very things that they are, but saying that we are. And, uh, of course, using profanity and language that I just I just don't use. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, I, I spent four years in the Navy. It's not like I've not heard these things, but uh, very offensive, very offensive. But it did give me a glimpse of what, the world will become when uh, the light, the light of the gospel. And I heard a, a, a gentleman who was being interviewed on the radio who's uh, written a book concerning the rise of hum immorality and the spirit of immorality. And he said the last time that it was at its peak was when the church, the Christian church, was being formed and the movement of God in the Christian church began to push back against these uh, uh, sexual goddesses and, and all of these things. And, uh, well, Satan had to withdraw his forces. But the thing is, is that what the gentleman was saying, he said, he always comes back. And when he comes back, he's stronger than he was before. And so the lesson that we learn from history is that the only thing that will defeat these things is the church and the power of God. This is a group called Breaking Ground. And the song is called Above the Storm. I like that idea. Because the sun still shines above the storm. Pretty song. It is. I've always enjoyed that song called Above the Storm by Breaking Ground. And uh, this is the uh, Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I get to do this every Sunday morning, and I enjoy it so much. And I do love to hear from the radio audience. You can call me at 850-567-1703. And, um, well... Speaking of the youth camp, it's coming up here pretty quick, June uh, seven or July. I'm sorry, July seventeen through twenty one. Now, Pickett Lake Camp that's uh, between Mayo and uh, Branford, uh, Florida, or Brandon. I'm sorry, Brandon, and um, well, it's ages eight through eighteen. We have. Two 
two camps that we run side by side, a junior camp and a senior camp. And, uh, well, we just have a lot of fun things that we do, but we also proclaim the Word of God. And uh, young people are, are blessed. It's a tremendous, powerful time. And I'm inviting you to send your young people. It's $150 for the entire week. That includes their lodging and their food and all the speakers and all the things that we do. And you can, again, contact me um, through uh, telephone is the best way at this point. Just send me a text or call me at your area code 850-567-1703. And we'll get all the information to you and get your young people registered. And uh, also, if you would like to be involved financially, you can uh, sponsor a child to go to camp or maybe just make a donation. Um 526 East 8th Avenue is the uh, address that you would send uh, donations to. And we appreciate it because, when I can say, this is, uh, this is our 11th year for the CYMI camp with this Christian Youth Ministries International. But I've been doing camp for a long, long, long time. I, I did the camps for the Upper Bible Church of Southeast Region for, I mean, 25 years, I guess it was. And then, uh, before that, I was a camper, and uh, I actually went as a camper and a counselor to Camp Northward in Falmouth, Kentucky, so I've been around youth camp for a long time, and uh, I tell you what, it's life-forming and life-transforming, and I would say it's very much an instrumental part of my being in the ministry today, and um, I know of other pastors who would tell you the same thing, so, and there's something else that uh I was told they said uh, a survey was done as to what is the number one uh, ministry to where people are called to the ministry, and it was determined it was youth camp, uh, the call of God, and that's something we talk about in uh, in our services. And so it's just a powerful thing. So again, area code eight five zero five six seven one seven zero three. So we've talked about. Corruption and high places and how that affects everybody. And the general demise of morality within a society, within a country, tears at the very fiber of that nation and of those people. And uh, unfortunately, we know that these things are very much demonic and we know that that uh, where it comes from. And it's very much from, from the of hell but the wonderful thing about it is that we have the book of revelation and the book of revelation describes what we would uh, refer to as end time events and it's like a lot of things is it every time that uh, something arises that's it's very traumatic for us in the church and we point to the revelation we say well the time is coming Time is near. The Lord's going to come back. He's going to claim his bride. And then uh, it doesn't happen. And what happens? Is it, the, as the scripture says, the heart of many the, will begin to wax cold. And the scripture even tells us that there will be a great falling away first. But then you begin to Pay attention to current history. And uh, it begins to stir you up when you go, wow, that sure does sound like what the Bible is talking about in the last days. And then um, I was listening to somebody on radio and uh, talking about some of the things that we're facing as a nation that uh, th- these are the sort of things that just curl your hair when you hear these things. But talking about the uh, modern day weapons, and of course, uh, this uh, in uh, artificial intelligence thing is just it's scary. It's just it's just really scary. But how that there's enemies that we would consider enemies who uh, would, would attack our country that 
they are developing weapons that we have not developed. We don't even have them. And they are very, very sophisticated. And even our uh, missiles that was developed uh, during the, the Reagan administration that has been able to uh, actually just knock missiles out of the sky. Well, they don't work against this particular type of uh, weaponry. And uh, not only that, but even to some of our enemies in the Middle East, they're helping them develop these same weapons. And um, what was said was that the Prime Minister of, of Israel made this statement. He said, if the rest of the world doesn't do something about it, then we will stand alone. And when I heard that, I thought to myself, that's Bible. That's Bible. Because we know that Scripture tells us that when this great battle takes place, this tremendous battle in the latter days that's described to us in the Revelation, when this takes place, it'll be all the armies of the world coming against this little country called Israel. And uh, when this takes place, says God's going to get involved in the fight. And uh, it, you, you read it. Just, just, just get your Bible out. And if you don't want to read the whole book of Revelation, just start at about uh, chapter 16. Uh, it may be better if you read the whole thing. But if you just start at chapter 16 and just, just read it through, then you'll begin to understand what this is all about and how that, uh, see, God, God loves the nation of Israel. And that's very clear through Scripture. God loves the nation of Israel. And uh, that's one of the reasons why you may have taken note that uh, whenever I finish my broadcast, I always pray for peace in the city of Jerusalem because it says, they who pray for peace in the city of Jerusalem will prosper. That's in the Psalms. And so that's one of the reasons why I pray. But you see, the word of God says that when evil arises, God will raise up a standard against it. That's the church. Gordon Mitt. It says, Meanwhile, back at the Devil cross. The devil laughed and said, I've won. See her precious son pay the cost at the cross meanwhile back at the cross <laughs> all the forces of hell being poured out and satan thought uh, thought he'd won but he didn't and he won't because christ christ the old song says on the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, Gospel on the Radio talk show. I'm Pastor Jack King. I am a person who loves the Lord and loves his word. I love his church. And, of course, I love Father God. And I, I love being with you on these Sunday mornings and spending these times with you. As we prepare ourselves to uh, head on out to church, um, some of you have probably already been to church already. Some services are very, very early in the morning on Sunday morning. 
But we started at 1105 at Freedom Road. And uh, well, we love visitors and love to see you. 720 Capital Circle Northeast. Check us out on the web, frcm.us. Come and join us. We just appreciate so very, very much. And I hope that uh, as we've talked about these things today, that they'll speak to our hearts. And I think the thing that we have to take away is if we have to look within our own hearts. We have to look at our own relationship with the Father. And uh, what can we do? What can we do to make sure that we are walking close to the Lord? Because it's very, very important in these, what we call the, the latter days. This is the sisters. It's called I'm Sure. I'm sure. That is, it's a foregone conclusion. I'm sure. And I am sure that God exists and that He sent His Son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. And the fact that I have confessed him as my Lord and Savior, I've confessed my sins and asked him to forgive me, and that's been granted. And I am sure, absolutely sure, that when Pastor Jack King is done here on this earth, I just step over into a whole new life, and, uh, a life that lasts forever, as the Revelation says, it's a place where there's no death, no dying, no sorrow, not even a tear to dim the eye, I'm sure. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hope that you are blessed as you go to your places of worship. And uh, let's just give God glory and praise. Father God, I thank you that you have given us this opportunity just to share the word of God and to share faith. And Father God, I do pray that, Lord, you would bless our church services today. And I pray for our pastors and those who proclaim your word. And Father, we do pray for peace in this world. And I pray for peace in America. I pray for the United States of America. And Lord, I do pray for peace in the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And until next Sunday morning, may the Lord bless you.